kicking off day number two of the Rochester International Jazz Festival with saxophonist Nick Hempton. Nick, welcome to Rochester. Thank you very much, Derek. Good to be here, man. So, Nick, talk about where did you pick up jazz in Australia? Who were some of your influences to start playing this kind of music? Uh, it's a tough one. I'm not quite sure how to answer it. The whole family is classical musicians, uh, and there was no jazz in the house at all. In fact, there still is no jazz at home. When I go home, I keep that uh, keep that to myself. Uh, I don't know. There was those late night jam sessions. There was something really attractive about it, and somebody gave me a saxophone and said, "This is the thing. Like, I want to go and hang out all night, jazz clubs, drinking, smoking, having a good time." And that's really how it started. Like, I, I used to tape records off the radio. Uh, and then I found Sonny Stitt and it was all over, man. That was, that was my thing. Sonny was the gateway. Yeah, man, as soon as I found that guy, I thought, this is what I want to be doing. That, transcribing a lot of Charlie Parker, uh, instead of going to class. So what is it about Sonny Stitt? Because a lot of folks talk about his music and it's being like really the entry, the way of playing jazz in a way that they can actually, it's accessible and it's easy to play for them and easy to really learn how to do this. That was the reason that I got into him. Actually, if I'm honest, it was Charlie Parker got me turned on in the first place. But a teacher I had early on said, you're going to spend your whole life working on Charlie Parker. That's genius level music. You know, that's, that's, that's a life's work. So talk to, like, go listen to Sonny Stitt. It's the same information, but sort of put in a much more easily understandable way. So you can hear all the, the building blocks of bebop within Sonny Stitt's playing, and it's a much easier way of learning it. Uh, and great tone, aside from that. Swing and great tone. You know, it's everything a, a bebop saxophone player should be. Speaking with Nick Hampton, Nick, the other thing I always wanted to ask you about is your other genius, in my opinion, writing. What inspired you to start writing your travels all around, the road, around the world and on the road? I'm not sure what the inspiration was. I think a lot of spare time, like a lot of <laughs> trains and a lot of airports. And I would always have a book and a little notebook and start yeah. taking notes. And it started to be a big thing. I started just really enjoying myself. Like... Uh, Every time I get through a day on the road, at the end of the day, it's nice to sort of sum it up in a book and just say, this is what happened. It lets you put the day behind you and go to sleep. And then I just started, you know, putting them out online. And I enjoy it. That was my next question, because a lot of folks will journal just for themselves, just to document where they've been. What made you decide to make it public? Um, I guess I just wanted some kind of, something to make me keep doing it. See, I really enjoy it, but I, I'm a fairly lazy person, and if there's something I like doing, it doesn't. I, I need something to really make me keep working at it. So I tried to set myself a goal. I put one out once a week, or it was once every three weeks, or at the end of every tour, get some stories out there, and it just kind of made me work on it a little bit harder, I think. So what can we expect out of tonight's show? Uh, I think it will be a swinging good time, Derek. I think uh, we're going to play. We've got uh, the, one of the, the modern greats of the organ up here with me, Kyle Kohler. Um, and we're going to play some swing and soul jazz, man. It's going to be great.